Hadley CPA meeting. Uh, thank you everybody for coming. We have um, broken our record for the number of requests at a single meeting. Uh, it's great to see so much use of uh, the CPA mechanism. Uh, don't worry, we have more than enough money to cover everything. All right. Okay, so that's not an issue. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, let's dispense with the approving of the minutes and get right to work. Any, any objection? All right. Um, last meeting we took the smallest requests first, so I thought this meeting we take the biggest requests first. And I think that's Kestrel's, right? Uh, yeah. Should we have a, a, should Well, we, there's this too, right? Okay. Should we have a rundown of how much money is available to spend I'm sorry. before we... Thank you, Edward. And should we please make them understand that just because we have the money doesn't mean that they're going to get it? Yes. Everybody hear that? <laughs> okay, but it's not like we'll have to pick and choose between you. That's, that's what I meant. Right. Um, whoops, where was it? How much money we have? How much money we have? One point nine million dollars, one million nine hundred ninety-four thousand, one hundred twenty-eight dollars and thirty-seven cents. Yes. Yeah. I made some copies if anybody wants. I'll take them. Great. This is, this is a very, very interesting much. document. Oh, this one. Yeah. Yes. I love it. You make yes. copies. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, we. Um, we received uh, $115,775 from the state, uh, $133,192 in change. I'm sorry, could you just... From, I'll, I'll give this to you. Okay, thank you. Um, and $25,000 in interest. Okay. So, uh, so we are doing all right. So we have uh, a state match of over 40%. Yeah. Good. Yeah, because yeah, we're in the sweet spot. Good. And what, what was the figure that we had to spend? Um, $1.99. Ah, I see it. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah. And I think they all totaled up to less than 600000 I think I figured it out. So even with our 600000 you know, floor, mm -hmm. we, were, we still have okay. it. Okay, yeah. yeah. But it depends on each account. Because uh, we can't yes. take that historical money for our index. Right, but well, we can take it out of the general fund. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, so let's see. Speaking of which, open space is zeroed out. Historic has uh, one hundred twelve thousand two hundred eighty-four. Housing is one hundred fifty-three thousand nine hundred ninety-five. One point one eight in the general fund. One point eight million. Yeah. You say. Soon we'll be talking real money. All right. Any other questions about the treasurer's report? Okay. Who's here from from uh, who's, well? Let's should we do Nabala first or Caesar first? Whichever one you want. Shallow. Shallow. Yeah. Thank you. Shallow first. All right. Uh, where do you want me to stand? Uh, somewhere where the camera can see. <laughs> Are you sure? This is the one? Yeah. 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 All right, so I know some of you, but not all of you. Well, just about all of you, I guess. Um, my name is Janice Stone. I'm the conservation agent for the town of Hadley, and I'm going to present the project. Um, Kestrel's the one who's putting it forward, getting things rolling, but we thought uh, we definitely supported it, so we felt we'd, we'd bring it in under a conservation commission um, request and we are contributing to it as well. So um, you've got all the materials, I'm gonna keep it short because I know you've got a lot of things to look over. Shala is 170 acres off of Commons and, Commons and Shattuck Roads and it's one of the largest unprotected farms in Hadley. It's adjacent to two conservation areas and um, that's the two codic areas that are in Amherst as well as in Hadley and it's also mixed to four APRs directly and it's also in the general area of a bunch of them. Here's my quickie additional map. Shala is the red area, the pink are conservation areas, and the oranges are um, APRs that are in the area. APRs being agricultural preservation restrictions, where the landowner sells the development rights to the property, but remains, he holds on to it, he or she holds on to the property, 
um, and continues to, to farm it, to lease it, whatever they're going to do, but it has to remain in agriculture. So that's what we're trying to do is there's, a, there's this big block of agriculturally protected land, but we've got a big opening, big hole right here, and Shala has been a project that has come and gone quite a few times. Negotiations have gone forward and then dropped, and we're really hopeful this time, and Kestrel's really um, moving on it and working with neighbors, and they can explain more about sort of the coordination of funding that they're working on if you want. Um, what I'll just tell you is that the whole project that we're talking about is $720,000. And out of that, because they're not going through the federal funding of agricultural preservation restrictions, which might take three years, instead we're just working with the state, with the Department of Ag. So the amount of money that the Department of Ag is, is giving us is less than what it would normally be because it isn't including federal um, money. So we're getting 360000 or 50% from the Department of Ag, at least that's what we're expecting at this point. So that leaves 360000 that we have to try to come up with. And so what we've come up with now is we're requesting 210000 from CPA. I didn't know if it was open, if there was any open space money left still or if it comes from the general fund. That's why I left it a slash on each of those. And then we're contributing $150,000 from our transfer development rights account and from our land conservation I'm fund. I'm sorry, who was we? Uh, I'm sorry, Conservation Commission. Yep, so that together, so it comes out to 21% of the um, mix comes from, from conservation and 29% from CPA. So like I said, it's u larger than usual just because of the way this APR is, is being um, put together with the, uh, without federal funds because of the delay in federal funds at this point. Is there any way to get those federal funds in a future date? I don't think so. so. And I don't know, Mark, Mark Wallace is here from Kestrel. I don't know if you have any other questions sort of like that that you want to ask him. Well, well yeah. when are you finished? Um, I guess I'm, I'm done as much as, uh, you know, I, I, like I said, I know you have the maps and everything. Um, I did do one more map because I hadn't actually shown it. I don't know if it's that important to you guys or not. This is the Shala area. This is the conservation lands in pink. And, and purple, and then these are all um, APRs, including one that isn't on the state list, but we have it in town, uh, Tudrin. And then this area here, all of this that's in green hatch is natural heritage and dangerous species area. area. I don't know if it's a turtle, a frog, a plant, or what it is, but a good portion of that, almost the entire piece, and certainly almost the entire part of Hadley's piece, is in that. So it has potentially at least some habitat, but a lot of it is already being farmed and continue to be just the way it is now. Any questions? Is all of this in Hadley? The part that we're doing, there, there is some, this is the town line here, so okay. there is some in um, Amherst, and Amherst is dealing with their CPA committee to get funding for their portion. Now what happens if, if, if you don't mind, um, what <laughs> happens if Amherst funding doesn't come through. I don't know if that's a Kestrel question, I guess, because they're putting it all together. Right. That's a good question. Um, honestly, out of the entire project, we're talking about 23 acres on the Amherst side. I know Dave Zomex leading up the charge to get the, uh, the Amherst funds lined up, so I'm not too worried. It, it's really, a, I think, a very much smaller portion of the project than the Hadley side. Most of the land is in Hadley. So. Um, I haven't talked about a plan B yet for that with our director, but I'm not too worried. It's not, it, it's not too much funds to make up, but uh, I think we're pretty confident, to be honest with you. But is your question, Edwin, is that going to break the deal? Yeah. So, so that's, that's the the I don't think so. So the, the deal is still being worked out actually right now with the landowner. We have an offer in. It has not actually been accepted. Uh, we expect it to, you know, to have a word on it before the final CPA vote in Hadley. So if the landowner says, no, I don't want money, this deal doesn't go through? You mean the Shala? Yeah. If I state? Yeah. I mean, we can come back and negotiate again. I mean, we've been working this long. We're going to try. We'd go into negotiations at that point again, uh, you know, if it comes to that. But hopefully we'll know. We have, I think, a really good offer on the table. It meets what I understand are what, what were his expectations. So... You know, again, fingers crossed. And it sounds like he would like to see the land protected, too. Uh, there seems to be a lot of community support, too. The pieces are coming together so far. So, But yes, he has to agree to the deal. Okay. But, and he hasn't yet. 
He has not yet. Uh, you're waiting to see if the funding is available. Uh, that's a good question. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not privy to his understanding. I know the offer was made over the holidays, so it was made relatively recently, just within the last few weeks. He's not going back up again. What else? <laughs> well, 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 I, I believe would be tried. I would imagine. I haven't checked this, but I believe would be purchasing an option on the property if that went forward. So, yeah. From a historical perspective, when the original CPA was adopted by the town, it was sold as preservation of open space agricultural land. So from primary purpose, this fits the bill. The uh, Alexandra Dawson made the presentation and she was very persuasive and, and people didn't realize there were other parts of the funding. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and also too, when we had our master plan reviewed once again, the number one priority for the town is to preserve open space agricultural land. So this does fit the bill. On the other side of the coin, if it doesn't go through, there could be a road starting on Cummins Road, going all the way through Shattuck Road. You talk about 50, 60, maybe 100 houses there. So there is a, a negative impact on the town yeah. if, if this <coughs> contribution is not made. That's true in terms of schools. Right? Exactly. You'd have to build a grammar yeah, school over there. And, uh, one other technical question aside, in as much as the federal funding is not going to be involved in this APR, does that mean that marijuana could be grown? <laughs> uh, this is from a planning board understand. perspective I because for the APR. people in the audience, yeah. if APR land, you're not allowed to grow pot of marijuana on APR land because it is partially has federal funding and the federal funding, well, the federal government does not recognize um, marijuana. Not yet. Not yet, <laughs> but, <laughs> but. But this wouldn't be federal funding in this process. That's why he's yeah. asking yeah. the question. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's why I'm asking the question. I, I have no so, idea. So this is from a private <laughs> right. perspective No, it's interesting. Question. The neighbors yeah. would want to know. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Well, I would assume that it would still have to go through a planning board for a, a town permit or something. Right. right. Uh, they do. Yeah. Right. right. So it, any anything that's legal as an agricultural product would be allowed to be grown on there. If it's something that requires your permit, mm -hmm. planning board permit, then it would have to do yeah. that. Well, the state doesn't recognize marijuana as agricultural. It's considered industrial. So that's, okay. that's a whole so, other argument. So then okay. probably not. If probably it's not. Probably not. Zoned for it. But that's their excuse. For making that, uh, but that's that's okay. kind of an aside. Interesting. So Interesting. we only have two and a half minutes left. <laughs> <laughs> you have okay. something else? Yeah. Um, so the access to this is off Shattuck Road, mm -hmm. right? Not off Cummings. Right. There are two axes. There is yes. one on Cummings. Yeah. One is down next to Maple. I think it's Maple Line Farm, mm -hmm. right down okay. there. Yeah. Oh no, no. But and, and so is there a road that goes in there, or uh, from Shattuck? Okay, I, I don't know because I haven't walked it. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a disclosure, yeah. please. I have worked on this property prior to knowing that it was going to be oh. subject to APR, so I just want that out there for the public to know. Okay. I, I, I've surveyed the property. That's good. Uh, again, prior to this, yeah. it was for another purpose. But okay. Is there a road that goes into There is the a road that comes from Cummins Road. That's Farm Road. Uh -huh. it, it goes into the property. And what about from Shattuck Road? Uh, there has to be something. There's access over there. I don't know yeah. if there's a farm I think it's just a farm. But it, it, I'm okay. so, there is. So this can remain agricultural. It's not going to be landlocked. It would have to remain agriculture. And part of the APR always requires that you have legal access to the property. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now, is somewhere in here there was a... Kikoski wanted to buy part of it. Right. Yes. Do you want to explain some of that? Well, I understand what yeah. that's all so, about. So, the, the question about Cummins Road, if, if, if uh, what uh, Kikoski was interested in is going to come to fruition, he was going to buy all the frontage on Cummins Road but give a right of way uh -huh. for farm access yeah. to the back. Mm -hmm. So, just so that's understood. I think, is that still? I believe that's so how it is you correct. Okay, any other questions? 
can we email you in the course of the next two weeks if people have yeah. other questions? Sure. Okay, yeah, because we're not to do we're not doing any votes tonight. Nope, that's fine. Okay. Okay. All right. nothing, nothing further. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Paul Pfeiffer. Oh, uh, maybe some forward to you. Did you say your name again? Sir, sure. Paul Pfeiffer. P H I F E R. Is this better? Paul, I'm going to bring this up. Sure. So I've been here before. I wanted to just first off to say thank you to you all. To, um, in May of 2017, the town voted to uh, support $400,000 for the Hopkins Athletic Fields proposal, which you all had supported. So thank you very much. I think part of one of the things I wanted to mention today is that we're moving forward. I think we might need to ask for an extension on the expenditure for money. No, I think you've got another year. Got another year. Okay. So I just wanted to give you an update and also come back and say we're asking for a bit more to get this finalized. We've done it had a lot of very generous people come forward with some donations, and I think we've got enough to get it all together with your all's help. Um, and I want to just give an update on where we are and what the next steps are. So here's Hopkins <coughs> Athletic Fields. Um, this in the dark green is a, this is a multi-phase project. This is our first phase. So originally from CPA, we received several uh, thousands of dollars to redo the design. That's been done. We'll talk about that in a second. So we've parsed it out into two phases. Um, and so what you see here is a new baseball field, a new soccer field in the middle, and a new softball field. Essentially uh, doubling useful fields that we have now. <coughs> an additional thing that we have here is over 2,000 feet of an asphalt uh, walkway for public use, uh, accessible, uh, ADA accessibility, emergency vehicle accessibility, to be finalized with the second phase all the way around. Also some place that the kids can use is, uh, with our growing uh, cross country team. This allows us to not move kids off. We have it doing either to the Hadley Elementary or the Young Men's Club, so everybody can practice together all at once. So it's a really, uh, and, and this is land, as you know, that is now in agricultural use. So we put it to the, it's an intended use years ago when it was purchased to make it a full agricultural field. So, so far, in addition to the $400,000 from CPA, we've raised, um, we've raised an additional about $8,300 of uh, donations from local bank, from private donations, um, share the love, the Subaru event, uh, PTO, or Hadley Mother's PTO, uh, was awarded that as well. They are committing at least 40,000 of that to this project. Previously, it had gone to the elementary school, now they're doing it to the Hopkins. Um, and the trustees have also been very generous. They've donated at least $100,000, if not up to 150. They're just discussing whether to do, in addition to 100,000, an additional 50, if we can match it. Well, we've suddenly got the, the Subaru PTO money, which hasn't been finalized, but the Share the Love event ended in December. We're hoping to get that money soon. I just talked to PTO the other day, and they're feeling very comfortable that it'll be at least $40,000. So I feel we've got at least another $200,000 lined up. Couple that with the 400000 we have. The new bid, though, is of course these things are never what we thought they were going to be. The, turns out the water management on this site is very complex. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. with some of the state rules about wetlands, and everything is being drained over to this area. And so uh, the design actually took longer than we thought. Uh, the actual build-out is more expensive than we thought. You have in your packet a, a cost estimate. What I'll note is that to reduce costs, we've removed the $99,000 fencing that was going to go along here. And so now, uh, with redoing the numbers, we're at about 780 or so with a, with a contingency, with a 15% O&P cost. And that, uh, so we'll come in and ask it for CPA for 185. So in addition to that uh, 600 or so we have to get 185 from you all and finish the project. That would allow us to go out for bid this spring to allow us actually to start doing construction this summer, which is important you know, to keep in line. With, we phased out how we're going to do the grass uh, management to have the team still able to use the fields. In addition, uh, we brought two students here just to give you a quick update on why they think this is important, right? This isn't just for the community, which is important to us, but it's also essentially, you know, I wanted to hear you all, you all to hear from students and why they think it's important to them to have these fields. So let me turn it over to Eric. So good evening, everybody. Thank you for having us <coughs> again. Uh, thank you for your original generosity for 400000 and uh, thank you for having us back tonight to uh, continue our efforts to try and uh, grow out these fields and maximize uh, the space that's already there for Hopkins Academy. 
and just turn it into wonderful playing fields for our student population. Um, we've talked at a few meetings and stuff and done our best to be impactful in these situations, but it's never the same as when you get the opinion of a student athlete who's actually been out there, been on the field, seen the good and the bad and everything in between of what they've experienced. So tonight um, we have two top-notch seniors <laughs> from Hopkins Academy who've been student athletes for as many years as I have been a uh, teacher and athletic director over the school. And uh, they put together a few notes that they would like to speak to the CPA uh, committee about just the importance of why something like this really needs to go forward. We have come all this way, and with your generosity and with your support, we can go that little bit extra farther with the, with the latest figures to really make this dream come true for the Hopkins Academy student body. So, um, Gage Smekta and Olivia Briganti are, would like to take a few moments for you tonight. So, thank you. Hello everybody. For those of you uh, who don't know me, I'm Gage Spanknabel. I'm currently a senior student athlete over at Hopkins Academy. A little bit about myself, I've been in the athletic program for as long as I've been at Hopkins. I've played in every sport and I think that I know a lot about this program personally. So the benefit, the, what I want to talk to you guys about tonight is the possible benefits of what this field and just this whole athletic complex like will bring not only to us as the students but also the community. There's three main points that I wanted to focus on tonight, them being safety, atmosphere of the sporting events, and just benefits to the program in general. So for the first safety reason, it's the conditions of the fields. Uh, speaking about soccer right now specifically, we like to separate it into like four different sections. One section you're like swimming in uh, water, one section you're in the Sahara Desert, uh, one section there's just crazy divots everywhere, and another section, I take pride in this, that Hopkins Academy is the only uh, school in Western Mass where you can play two sports at one time. You can play right back and shortstop all at the same time. Hey, can I stop you for just a second? Um, did you bring copies of the proposal? Yeah, uh, I believe Dr. McKenzie has them out. Yes, you would try to give them to me, but I said no. Yes. Sir. Okay, I'm sorry. Please continue. Of course. So that's one of the biggest safety concerns. Uh, but another one is off the field, not including just the students. It's actually the fans. Currently, the field is per the uh, varsity and junior varsity fields are perpendicular to each other. So when a JV game is going on, as well as a varsity game, which it does mostly during the season, the fans are seated right here. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm not sure if I would want to sit right in front of possibly somebody taking a really hard shot and hitting me and somebody in the back of the head. So that's just a big safety concern regarding the field. Uh, so another big point that I wanted to make was the atmosphere of the soccer games, baseball games. So whenever you go to a op opposition's field, you want to feel, or you're at home, you want to feel good there. You want to feel excited. You want to be proud for who you play for. And it's like, I'm proud of this field. Yes, I am extremely happy of Hopkins Academy and this athletic program, but this field and just whole redo of it will just re-energize the program, in my opinion. It will bring more people to the games, which leads me into the last thing, which is benefiting the community as long as the program itself. With this new uh, field going in, it will bring, like I said, a bunch of more people who maybe never attended a Hopkins Academy soccer game before or a baseball game. Just by like a show of hands, how many people have been to a Hopkins Academy sporting event such as baseball or soccer in like the last year. So as, as you know, if we have, it's not necessarily fun for the fans as well if you're sitting on the baseball field in the dirt, in the cold. So this, this overall, this project will be extremely beneficial not just for the students but the whole community as a whole and bring us together. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the first applause of CPA speech ever done. <laughs> Hi, I'm um, no, 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 no pressure. Yeah, it's fine. Let's take it.
Sorry. Um, I'm Olivia Vergenti. I'm also a senior at Hopkins, and I've also been in the sporting programs for um, my whole time at Hopkins. Um, I'm going to be talking to you more about the standpoint of the softball fields, just because that's where I've had most of my experience. Um, so one of the first things I want to talk about is just how this would improve the appeal and the look of the school and the fields. As Gage said, when you go out to play your game, you want to have pride in where you're playing. And just to be able to have a whole new setup and to just be like, show off to your opponents uh, what you got. Um, it would feel really good to have this new setup and just to, again, like he said, energize the program and all the players. Um, the safety issues that I found in the school and on the fields, um, especially in the JV softball field, which is now in the back corner, um, the dirt can be very dusty and very rough, and when you're having young players sliding on it, um, it can be very dangerous to their legs, and if they don't have you know protective sliding shorts on, that can be very damaging. Um, and then, as well as some of the grass, especially with the varsity field and the JV field, um, it can be very clumpy, and you know you don't want to be tripping over that as you're trying to get a ground ball or something. And especially, I played third base for a good chunk of my time there. Right behind the base, there is this pretty large hill, and when a ball hits that, it's pretty uh, questionable where it's gonna go. So you gotta take some guesses. And you know you don't want to be going up for a pop fly, and you don't know what's going on in the ground below you, and you have to worry about like running into the fence as well. It's pretty uh, impressive if you catch it, but you know you gotta watch out for that. Um, and then one of the last things I want to talk about is the track edition or the walkway edition that we were going to put in. Um, this would not only allow the cross country team to have an area to train that was off of the grass, the bumpy grass that is currently there, um, but it would also allow them to be out of the way of the other teams because right now they're just running around the perimeter of the fields and this would give them their own space where they're able to practice and I can't speak for all of them but I just thought I'd throw it in there for them. Um, and this would also give the soccer, softball, and baseball teams a place to train and condition so that they're not just running on this uneven ground. And, yeah, that's pretty much all I have. And yeah, this would just be a really good morale booster for all of us in the program, and this would just mean a lot to the students that are here right now. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What, what would this do to the budget of the school committee to uh, fix all those fields up and then they have to be maintained? Right. Yeah, we're Is talking there going to be an increase of X? Any or Eric, do you want to weigh in on that? Yeah, we, we talked about this at the, actually at the, one of the previous meetings or one of the town meetings. So, what we're doing here is we're creating more fields and more space on campus, which means we don't have to shuttle off campus, mm -hmm. which is an additional fee that I've incurred in the last few years. So we either take that through our contracted transportation budget or my athletic revolving budget. So by allowing more space on the field, allowing more teams to stay on campus, I don't have to pay that $75 to $100 a day or either the entirety of the spring, depending on how the days go and the weather, mm -hmm. or in the fall, because uh, we either use the elementary school or the young men's club to shuttle students to the practice sites or game sites for the spring for baseball. So we'd be saving there. So when we did a cut rough cost estimate on what it would take to get, Mr. Mish would need a new um, mower, which he had already was getting towards needing a new mower anyway, so it wasn't directly related to the project, but we kind of looked at it in the same vein. Um, it about evened out. It's, it'd probably be a little bit more for the upkeep of the fields in the long run, but to pay a little bit more and keep everyone on campus nice and safe and in a better area and to have brand new fields I think is worth the, the added slight addition to the maintenance costs. Um, also there's uh, the last paragraph of the proposal that I got online my, my printer was being persnickety. Um, it, there's an issue with uh, a portion of the land that is Gonna dip in one of the corners at the land, and then if that's not resolved, you're gonna pull this at town meeting. Is that correct? So there's a, there's an in contention. Others in this room can maybe speak to it more than I did. A little third of an acre right here, 1,700 square feet. Uh, 
where it's, when we brought it to um, the select board, this design, mm -hmm. as we needed to, there was a, a, a local landowner who said, wait a second, I own that piece of land. And I don't think that's fully resolved as to ownership, but we, we do want to clarify that. And frankly, I do think it's in the school's or the town's interest. So the town is actually leading this discussion with the landowner that's happening next week. The, a member of the planning board will attend, a member of the school um, will attend. Uh, it's a very important, of this sort of whatever it is, 80, 90 acre project, that third of an acre is actually very important because this, all the water is draining there mm -hmm. And as we talked about previously, moving <coughs> into that ditch, mm -hmm. um, and did, complying with the state rules, that there's a, there's some mechanisms of drainage that are important to that. So, yes, we do think it's important to get that. Right now, it's in mixed use. Uh, sometimes it's farm, sometimes it's not. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yes, our hope is that we would be able to secure that. The town would be able to secure that land. And I just wanted to bring up a point. Um, last time we came. With the other proposal, the overall proposal was less because the whoever had made the uh, document for us hadn't built in a contingency, the ten percent contingency originally, which is one of the reasons we're coming back. So that use of that ten percent is technically an unknown, um, as well as this. So there's a few variables on why we really needed this one hundred eighty thousand to um, well, to let's finalize. Let's be clear: we're not asking yeah. for this additional funds to, if we were to actually end up purchasing that third of an acre if the landowner was willing. We're not actually asking for this, uh, these funds to be used for that. Yeah, I just wanted to talk to, to the contingency because that's now built in. It wasn't built in the original cost, but it's right. there as a, a safety net in case the project goes over. So we may <coughs> not we may not end up using all the money if that contingency is not used. Yes. If you do not get this uh, fulfillment of your request, what are your options? From from your committee or from the land? From our committee. Uh, well, we'd have to go back to fundraising. We'd have to uh, raise the money. I mean, we need this money to finish phase one, so we'd have to find other ways to get it. Could you eliminate certain things? I remember when we were involved in a discussion, sure. the, the netting or something was eliminated uh, because you didn't want the request to be too large. And yeah, we could. Uh, and there's could, always that possibility. For example, is the irrigation system still in? It is, uh, and that is actually at a, I think, so what's, the, the what's the cost of the irrigation? $65,000. Pardon? $65,000. 65000 So, for multiple reasons. One is to reduce maintenance costs, right? Um, our advisory board, when we put this together, which included Dan Markowski from UMass, the, the heads of the, the, the grounds there, he recommended, yes, you have it. Um, the designers strongly recommended, yes, you done. Their concern is that you, you would put, uh, uh, you would invest in all this without irrigation, and that you would essentially not have the turf you need. That it's, it's important to invest the 65000 and it'll pay dividends in the long run. Um, and in some of our other contributors that we've talked to, uh, like the trustees, were very concerned about if you're going to go in, make sure you go in with the right investment. So spend a little bit extra money up front, which saves money in the long run. And they said to put it in afterwards would be astronomical yeah. period. Yeah. Putting it in so, so, so would the project die if you don't get the recommendation at the town meeting? Well, I wouldn't say it would, it would die. I'd say we'd have to go back and find other funds. I, I don't think we'd necessarily lower, lower our costs, but we, I think we have to keep fundraising. And we've been pretty successful so far for raising 20 to 25 percent of this overall cost of 780. Then we would have to go back and raise 30 to 40 percent. It would be difficult. It would be difficult. Yeah. Question. Uh, I just wanted to point out that I. I'm a high school soccer official, and so I've been to every school in the Valley, Hampshire, Franklin County, and I do believe that the irrigation would be appropriate. You're going to spend all this money to, to fix these fields up, yeah. and then if, it, if the conditions aren't right, the grass is going to go, and then the fields turn into who knows what, basically what they are now, and there's nothing better than playing or <coughs> officiating on a nice field, so I would be wholly in favor of the irrigation. Important. Just curious, did you have to go through the town or DEP to get the permitting or get the allowance for the um, <coughs> water for the irrigation? Have I know there's at that. Um, there's already a well there that when they had redone the soccer field, had, this was before my time, but this is what has been told to me. The varsity soccer field was redone at one point, and they tapped water or they tapped the well over here, and they had actually a big cannon at one point too. It was Again, before my time. Um, so the water source is there and it's already been drilled and it's just sitting there. 
Okay. So. Um, you may want to look into what permitting aspects because when you withdraw it over a certain amount of water yeah. with a well or a municipal system, yeah. you have to get a permit from DEP. Okay. So I do know DEP and DPW have all reviewed these specs and have approved okay. Yeah. Okay. But I, I can inquire with that specific. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, any other questions? Well, I was just wondering where the bleachers were going to go. <laughs> so, I, so yeah, they would go. Um, no, they they're remo still removable. Or what? So yeah, no, they wouldn't be. They would be a permanent structure, but the final placement of them—they're not on here. Yeah. We kind of have some wiggle room. It's something I talked to the designer about. Depending on where we want the track, where I was thinking, I was talking to the designer about how far back we want these things. So there's plenty of space in the design to adjust the fields a little bit, kind of moving here or there. Do you know what I mean? Like you crunch them in, provide more room for the bleachers while still maintaining plenty, plenty of room for the track that goes around. So the fields don't have to be exactly in these spots. Um, I was almost thinking there's wiggle room to pull them in a little bit and put the bleachers here and here and here and here. So then there's a little bit more safe space and safety for the side. <laughs> I mean, currently our bleacher is right in as soon as you hit a foul ball, it's right off the side of it. So it's it's right in the wheelhouse. Um, this would be a, so much of a better option back and almost behind the, the dugout or the backstop, which would be new in modern backstops. So they'd be bigger and they'd be able to stop more the deflection of foul balls. Yeah. I mean, side. typically you have home and yeah. visiting bleachers. And uh, yeah. I will note, I think it's uh, we would commit to not using CPA funds <coughs> to the bleachers uh, in this home. You have 10,000 here. Because I think. Uh, I'm not sure if it comports with the CPA rules to purchase structures like that. Yeah. I thought permanent structures you could use, but not semi-permanent. No, just the opposite. Yeah. Just it's, the opposite. Uh, so CPA can be used for movable bleachers, right. not? Right. Oh, OK. Yeah. The whole court case about it. OK, gotcha. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, any further questions? What's phase two going to be? Phase two. Well, glad you asked. It'll be the um, redoing of the soccer fields. Uh, and the, oh, there you go, the baseball fields. A key thing here is we're going to turn the baseball, so if you, currently the baseball field is this <coughs> way, turn it 90 degrees and face this way. A practice field here, this is just really unused right now. Redoing of that field that Olivia had mentioned, that there's, this is where the hill is, it's, pretty, it's quite dangerous actually. Uh, and so, and then the, the finalizing of the track all the way around. Well, the uh, upper soccer multi pulp purpose field there, will that be far enough away from the walnut trees so that the walnuts won't fall on the field anymore? <laughs> yeah. Well, the walnut trees, they're right here. The field is actually farther back, closer to, it's really close to the line, as you know. So this is actually, by expanding the fields out and taking this room and swinging it that way, you're getting it much farther away from the walnut trees, which have been cut back multiple times. But they keep coming at me. And, and, and I know they were both cross stick every day, taking those things. And another thing that's nice is uh, <laughs> we would have um, two fields that are moving what north and south now. East, these east, this east and west field, the the sun really gets in the goalie's eyes. Yeah. So thanks for your previous support. Will you be back before us, yeah. money for the next phase? Probably. I mean, what? Yeah. First thing, step one by phase step. At one phase at a time. I want to get construction going. You know, if the timing could be, we could start if we get approval from you all, and then town and. Uh, we can start construction this summer, which would be really exciting. I think once people start seeing that, we can get some momentum. We've already got some leads on uh, possible other funders, but I think they're more interested in getting seeing the whole vision done, so I think they would be focused on phase two. Okay, anything further? On okay, this? so this is in addition to the money previously Correct. granted, so yeah. you're asking, there was, we more. this is 185,000 more. Right. In addition to the Four hundred thousand, right? And okay. the two hundred or so that we've raised outside of this. Right. So if you're looking for a twenty percent match out of that seven eighty, we're saying we're, we're approximately getting twenty twenty five percent. And then if there is an issue with the lower corner, right? Well, we'd have to come back and talk to you. You know, we'd have to figure out the next step. I'm hopeful that like Castrol is with Amherst and and that piece of land. I'm hopeful that we can find resolution here to this. 17,000 square feet, this third of an acre, that's not heavily used. Uh, mm. Is it possible that it might be resolved before town meeting? Yes. Yeah. We're meeting with the landowner next week. Okay. With the town and the planning board and uh, 
out of school. Anything else? So All right, thank you for coming. Thank Especially you. to the student athletes. Yes, thank you very much, Gage. Well done. I want to thank you guys for coming and uh, hope you speak in favor of the article at town meeting. That would be great. Thank you. more typical of what we've done before. It's another APR, Agricultural Preservation Restriction. The Nibala property is located off E Street. I gave you this map before, but I didn't have the uh, streets clearly labeled. So it's right off of E Street. It's just north of the Young Men's Club, for those who happen to know where that is, and uh, just north of, of Bay Road. Um, this whole striped area in the back here is the Fort River, and all of that is another big natural heritage and endangered species area. And it's also a very important focus area for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, as you probably know from their refuge on Moody Bridge Road. But this whole Fort River is a really important um, area for turtles, for fish, for water quality, um, all sorts of things. So this provides an opportunity for the Nibala family to continue to farm this farm, which most of you probably have bought vegetables at at one time or another, and um, to protect the land permanently as um, agricultural land. So it's, uh, how many acres? 38 acres of prime farmland soils, and the total cost is going to be 660000 So sort of similar in cost to what the Shala one was. This one, though, we're lucky in that we are getting the, the full Department of Ag, including federal funding on it. So the Department of Ag is paying $556,136, or 84.26% of the total cost. Um, and that, like I said, is more typical of what we're usually able to get with the uh, Department of Ag for APRs. So that leaves 103,000. Hold on just a second. Yeah. What were the figures? 80. Um, so yes, is, is that Happy's contribution, which is then divided by Happy's contribution, would be one of three eight six four. We're asking for eighty three thousand ninety one dollars from CPA, and then we're providing twenty thousand seven hundred and seventy three dollars from the Conservation Commission's transfer of development rights fund. So it comes. It's something like um, the town will be paying. 15.74% uh, of the total amount, and the Department of Ag is paying 84.26. Um, um, like I said, 38 acres. It's also less than a half mile from the Callahan Wells. It's in zone two of the Callahan Wells. And uh, that's besides the rear wildlife protecting agriculture. We also have the uh, protection of the aquifer for the public water supply. And I think that's probably all the, all the other thing is that Part of the purchase agreement that's going on does involve a cleanup of the vehicles and debris in the back. And that's supposed to be reclaimed to productive farmland by March of this year. So I don't know, with the weather we've had, I don't know if that's going to happen, but that's part of the agreement is that that area will be cleaned up so that we won't have to, to worry about that. Agreement with the landowner? The Department of Ag with the landowner, yes. Yep. I don't know if I had another map. I guess not. I think that pretty much covers it. Um, it's they they um, grow potatoes, sweet corn, squash, and some hay, and it is part of a large block of farmland between um, Route Nine and the Fort River. Do you have any questions? If I don't know how to ask this, but what if they don't clean up that? Parcel and back, what happened? That's an agreement they have with the Department of Ag. I assume then that the APR won't go through, it'll be delayed. 
until it's done. I don't, I don't know. I'm not. You don't know anything about that. That's my you? understanding yeah. as well. But it won't go through until it's done. Okay. No. I just, just for the people at home. Okay. Yeah. She, she want to explain about the TDR funds. Oh, okay. Um, the TDR is the transfer of development rights, and it's actually um, when some developers come to the town, and I believe, and I'm not that clear because it's more like a planning board, zoning board yeah. issue, but um, it's, it's a bylaw within the town that if they don't want to or can't provide the full amount of parking. They can't like, provide the full amount of parking. Yeah, the, and, their, and the, their commercial development project involves um, alteration of agricultural land. Then they have to pay into this, into this fund that is calculated based on like a rolling number of the last I don't know, five or ten years average value of acreage for our farmland. Um, that's been gone. That's gone through the APR. So the value changes a little bit, and that adjusts how much people have to pay in for these different projects. I don't know if you can explain it better. That, but, that's it. Yeah. yeah. At any rate, so it's, it's specifically committed to farmland preservation. So that's why we're using that one. And between these two projects, we will be zeroing out that account. And so we'll have to wait until other things come. But that will no longer be one of our funding sources. But we thought it was important enough to do for both of these projects. And as far as the Conservation Commission is concerned, we're not zeroing out all the accounts. No. We but still have TDR something to, for the future. Yeah. OK, mm -hmm. we're just zeroing out the TDR account. Yeah. Okay. And it's still open, so if more things come in that fit that requirement, then slowly money will be going back into it. OK, good. Do you know offhand what the total number of acres this brings us to? No, I don't. I should, I should find that out. Alexandra's um, thing was that she wanted, I don't know, she wanted half of the town's acreage. So I don't know if it was like 4,000, then she was moving up to 8,000 <laughs> acres. You know, in town. In What's APR. the total number of acres we have in APR? It's over uh, four. It's over 4,000. I, but I don't know. It's the largest it's in the state, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Got to stay ahead of Amherst. <laughs> well, I think we are. We're between. Well, we're, we're, it's we're, the largest. We are the largest. Reason. Yeah. <laughs> it has more land. <laughs> well, no, it's more good land. land. It's good land. And it's, it's not. It's, yeah, it's keeping yeah. it from. Is there anything okay. out of the ordinary in this request? No, other than standard? the cleanup requirement, which um, I hadn't seen before. But you know, this project needs it, so it's good that that's being taken care of. It's not something we have to worry about. Okay. And Same editorial comment as I made before. Yes. I mean, from the priority of the town, whether it was the initial uh, passing of this funding, and uh, from the master plan, of course, that gave that as the number one priority for the town. Seems to be the one thing everybody agrees on. Yes. <laughs> so far, so good. We appreciate that. I don't want to jinx it. No. <laughs> Okay, any, uh, I guess I didn't understand about this TDR. Is it transfer of development? Do you have to have parking with it? Or sometimes what? somebody will come in, they want to put a particular building in, but they will not have enough parking for their parcel, the kind of building they want to put in. But this will not have building on it. Right? No, 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 no. no, no, no. It, they, will, they will give oh. the town money in lieu of being short of parking oh, 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 oh. and the money goes into the agricultural okay. and it's managed by the conservation All commission right. i have another question about the wells is this apr going to impact the wells at all or it's in, maybe protect it even a little it would just protect the land from development it's and the it's, aquifer protection yeah. district it is in the aquifer protection oh, district that too, well. such that if somebody is going to build something there, yeah. uh, they they have to come before the planning board, and you only can build certain. Not the zoning board, the planning board. Planning board. Yeah, yeah. There's certain yeah, uses that you wouldn't be allowed. Yeah. yeah. And as far as agricultural runoff, usually the the agricultural products, mm -hmm. like you may be familiar with the Temek one in Whiteley, where it contaminated mm -hmm. some of the wells. local house wells, so they have to put in uh, water. Chess it was something like that contaminating the Callahan well would it be remote. It's pretty deep, so. But Plus it's in zone two, which is the second area out of 
because you have zone one, which is immediately around the wells, uh -huh. and then you have the zone two, which is further beyond. In the agricultural preservation. Mm -hmm. This is academic if there's the APR, right. because then you can't build anything there. Right. right. You have and then unless you buy it back. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Any, anything else? No, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. See you in two weeks. <laughs> What should we do next? Sure. Sure. All right. Please. Four dollars. <laughs> okay. Um, thanks for having the Park Commission here, and thanks for, uh, for the, uh, the CPA's committee support so far for the renovation of the Turka Park. Uh, in the past, you've probably seen um, members of the Friends of the Turka Park. Um, right now, that that uh, committee had that ad hoc group has diminished to the last minute one moved to uh, out of state to do with his family. So mm -hmm. the commission has kind of picked up the slack at this point. Um, we are in phase three, um, and we are getting close to finish wrapping that part up. Uh, what was encountered late this summer and this past fall was um, even though there were test boards at the beginning of the project, we encountered a fair amount of buried stumps. I can't believe that was, you told those, us was there. Those weren't stumps. Those were trees. Yeah, those were trees. Not quite stumps. They were. They were actually. I was. I will have to say that I was impressed that is at the. Um, <laughs> it's coming down here. At the um, size and wow. the condition of which these things are. Are you selling? Is these? this a new <laughs> revelation that no one, everybody knew there were stumps there? They just didn't know so what it was. They, they, yeah. they did uh, before the project began. They did test borings. To, to attempt to locate them, and they, they couldn't find them. So it wasn't until they were doing this particular part. So basically, um, we can see the heavy equipment mm -hmm. <laughs> way up towards the front, not way out in the back, is where the, uh, the, the, the stumps are. It actually happens to be uh, underneath an area that was planned for um, the playground, as what happened. So, that and a few other minor changes, like the retention base in the, the soil that was on site was not adequate for drainage and that had to be replaced with something that was to facilitate drainage and the retention basin. Um, we basically uh, hit some obstacles that uh, ran the bills up and uh, to the tune of close to 60,000, um, of which we had to make some uh, Difficult decisions in the fall, we opted to take money that had been allocated for paving, which was uh, roughly $27,000, and put that towards uh, these remediation efforts. Um, uh, also, what was kicked in was the uh, $25,000 out of the Park and Rec's Woodchuck Fund. And Mr. Nixon was able to allocate to find some money to help pay for some of the uh, consulting services bills that added into all of that. So basically what the commission is now looking for is uh, to get uh, money to finish the paving aspects of this project, which uh, a year and a half ago were $27,000. We're trying not to repeat uh, what we see from other projects out there. We're asking for 32, which includes uh, a little bit of growth in the potential bid for that paving, plus uh, a basketball hoop and uh, so we can have a court basketball. So um, that's what the that's the background of the request, and uh, uh, any questions on that? Is paving an approved use of CPA funds? Uh, if it increases public access, yes. The parking lot for the park. Mm -hmm. It was part of the original proposal. Yes. No, I'm just asking. Right. Where is this? Is it Turkey Park? Yeah. At Ridge and Hunter. Yeah. Right at that four way Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, so it's left. partly done. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. I mean, it, it's amazing the stumps. Uh, I've had a lot of people say, were they not aware 
Uh, as we, I, Joe, I spent a lot of time there, there they, in that you know, thing. It, they and were, the stumps, you, over time, everybody saw the town dumping stumps there. It, it, it's not like it was a great discovery. <laughs> no, what, what, what it was was the extent of it and the, and the costs associated in dealing with it. Now, yes, the town did bury them there at some point in, in the efforts to you know, convert this into a park. Um, you know, that decision was made by uh, town, town meeting several years ago. And so we're now at the very end of this. And yes, the, the discovery of the stumps in this particular spot that wasn't out back and there was no oil of, you know, uh, drums of contaminated oil or other things that had also been rumored to be underground. Um, but, you know, we did hit them and uh, we didn't know the extent of them. So, we found that out. so the other thing is too, were you not aware that by taking all the vegetation off the side hill that water was not going to wash and you needed this fabric? Um, this, it's, that, it's like no, no. You, the retention basin is on. No, no. The I'm front. talking the side hill. What's the? Uh... No. No. There was two thousand dollars. We had to adjust the slope because of the way it came down. It left a um, kind of a shelf in the original uh, designer's plan. So we that two thousand dollars came out of actually the woodchuck fund was used to smooth that area off to, to ease the transition. Um, so that was uh, part of the. Uh, it was not in the uh, contractor's original bid. So that was part of the. So that's not the seven thousand dollars stabilization fabric. No, that that stabilization fabric was actually going over where the stump refill was was occurring. So there's going to be that was part of the playground area, and to um, we're going to put all the soil back. They're going to put the this fabric down on top, so that when the playground is built, we don't have, you know, yeah. if there is the chance they don't get every stump, we're not going to get a sinkhole, you know, in the middle of the playground. Well, all the stumps are gone, though. Yeah, we hope. We hope. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I mean, certainly, I, I still have reservations. I mean, to spend that amount of money for, well, uh, uh, what's, what's the total everything. amount going to be? 213000 Everything's expensive these days. Everything's expensive these days. and. Many projects come out to be more money than anticipated. I mean, perfect In fact, example. Almost everything. Look at what Hopkins. It seems. Their project just came in four hundred. Well, then they came back. And it said, seems this is becoming a pattern. We'll have mm -hmm. to discuss that, you know, with our committee. Uh, and well, like, people are not willing to say, "Look, let's eliminate this, eliminate that," in order to get the project completed. It's easy to say, give me more, give me more. And th that doesn't seem like a prudent way to plan. Right. Okay. And I, but I do understand that when you're doing projects, sometimes there are unforeseen events that happen. Um, yes, dumps were there, but um, where they were located wasn't accurate. Um, what you found was different than what everybody thought was there. So, I mean, it's it's a project. It's gone two phases. It's in its third phase. I mean, I look at it from the standpoint of see it through. What, what would be the repercussions if this money wasn't approved for the park? We'd be struggling to find a way to pave the, uh, that, the, the area, not only for parking, but also part of the uh, paving was the path, uh, the, lower, the lower walking path. So, you know, we would have to attempt to, we basically, we had 25,000 in the woodchuck fund, which was used out of reserves that we were going to hope to spend for uh, additional aspects of, for this park, you know, maybe, uh, you know, add some features to it, but that is gone, so now we have to we consider how we're going to spend it. I mean, there are. Well, have you spent the uh, entire 40000 that was going to be allegedly raised by the people in the area that wanted the park? Um, there was nowhere near 40000 raised, but that was the proposal. I said, I'm going to defer to the Friends Park and Rest. Okay. Uh, Friends is a Turkish park on that. 
I think your point is that that money's not coming. Right? Yeah. So can't count on that. Any other questions about this? What's this going to do to the, your your budget? Because not I'm assuming that the friends of the Turka Park they don't exist. So Park and Rec has <laughs> graciously consented to take over the park. Now, is I'm assuming a park is going to require maintenance. Right, and that's been is discussed with the previous DPW director. Uh, so right, so are we looking at an? Is, Everybody in this room is a taxpayer. Are we going to end up paying more money for maintenance of a park that they already paid for? They're going to be paying twice. Well, there was some level of maintenance before. Um, we were going to increase yeah, but we never bit. talked about that. There was a level of maintenance, and it kind of got pushed aside and forgotten about. And uh, my, my, my concern is that you be honest with people and just say, well, it's, yeah, we know it's going to be cost. It's going to cost to plow it. It's going to cost to maintain it. It's going to cost to empty the trash barrels and stuff like that. Right. What's it? Does that, is that going to come out of the DPW budget? Is it going to come out of the park and rec budget? It, it has in the past come out of, the, you know, been services by the DPW. They've been mowing the lawn and uh, there's been, I mean, we're adding a little bit of plowing to this question is whether or not, you know, how open are we going to plow that parking lot in the winter anyway. There's always a stress for any applicant. They know the lower the amount they ask for, the more likely they are to get it. Yet, if there's a problem with the project, they have to come back and ask for more. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? Do you ask for more the first time or do you... And so you're stuck on it. And if I can share my you know, experience from my previous seat on the building committee, um, it, that batting average is fairly high. Uh, but, uh, part of the problem is that projects increases. Uh, others might here might agree. It's roughly, I think the figure is roughly two percent a month. That's what they're calculating. Now. Um, uh, it's a number that I've heard banded around. So you get into some of these projects, and as we get into delays, what you were bid on two years ago, and by the time you get the bidding process and you come to town meeting, you get it all approved, and you start. That could have been 24 months, and in that time, the costs have gone up, and suddenly the, you're not getting the same value, and you have to wind up coming back to to back back up. And that process takes some time. So, like, you know, so you don't want people to hedge too high uh, with a contingency. You know, contingencies in there for contingencies, but then when they, how do you deal with this inflation aspect of it? Well, we would try to circumvent something like that because if you came in with a plan before people were coming in, plans on the back of an envelope and we want this with very little idea of what's going to be constructed. So we would give seed money so that you could come in with a realistic plan and hopefully get some expert opinion so that you come in at least somewhat on budget. Right. I think in this case there was a plan. There was a designer involved. They did some, you know, exploratory aspects to uh, try to isolate this particular problem. But um, I mean, it could be readily seen that that little leaching catch basin was not going to work. Yes, we had a lot of rains. I drive by it every day, and it was raining and it overflowed. It was raining and it overflowed. It just wasn't adequately designed. So. We have to pay the penalty for somebody that inadequately designed something. But uh, I won't that's a certain thing. Right else. Mm -hmm. The thing is, I think that we've spent so much money already. Like we're 278 or something we put into it. So now, for to not have a, 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 something of value after that, if we're looking just to do another 32,000, at least what you know, I feel like if. We've already put so much money into it. I don't want to see it wasted. I want to just, you know, if we have to do a little bit more so that the community can enjoy it. That'd be, because um, it does, you know, maybe maybe it should have been looked at a little bit stronger the first time. Is is, is the problem? But now we've already well, gone so much into it. This is one of those emotional it. things. The town was going to sell it for a building lot to get, and, <clears throat> right. and uh, the neighbors didn't want a house there, so they formed this committee. Uh -huh. And they just wanted their own little private park there, and uh, it evolved into uh, 
amphitheater for concerts and, and well, you know. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and maybe it wasn't, uh, you know, should have been looked at. Look. But now that we've but gone so much into it. the minute you question it, something, the minute you question mind. something, you become mm -hmm. the negative person that doesn't want it. You know, so, That's but I think okay. people on boards have to question. Mm -hmm. Well, you're on the finance committee. Yeah. That's right. Well, I think, yeah. Joe, okay. to your point, I mean, this is happening on several fronts where mm -hmm. things get approved, and then I mean, I, I I agree with Andy. Nobody could predict what was underground. Unless somebody was there and counted what they put in the ground however many years ago, and it's got to be 50 years ago, um, yeah, nobody knows what's there. So in good faith, they did test holes and found nothing, and so went about it, and there's nothing anybody can do about it. And I agree with Amy, we're at the point where, all right, let's, let's get it done and put it to bed, whatever, whatever it takes. It was a billion dollars, okay, that's another story, but the amount of money they're asking for doesn't seem that outrageous, and the reason for it doesn't seem outrageous to me. Anyone else? Okay. Another one down. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Does that bring us to you? Are you next? Yes, you're next. I haven't got your list. <laughs> we, we don't have a list. We're I don't have your list. I've got my list. <laughs> okay, now you call for them. Uh, my name is Peter Boyd, 144 Mount Warner Road. I know about a third Could you say your last name again? I'm sorry? Could you say your last name? Just so M-A-L-T-A-D-Y. Thank you. Peter. Okay, 144 Mount Warner Road, which just happens to be the old Zaturka house. <laughs> for those of you who have been in Haverhill for a long, long time. Um, I'm a member of the Friends of Lake Warner, the board of the Friends of Lake Warner, and I'm here representing the board. The board unanimously supported what I'm presenting tonight. There are two proposals I'm presenting, two applications I'm presenting. Uh, they came out of a set of nine. Uh, we basically narrowed it down to what we thought was most important. I'll take the one I do believe is most important first, and that is the color form. Uh, I spent a couple of hours this afternoon analyzing rain patterns last year. We had six to eight different occasions where we got over one inch of rain last year, which resulted oh, yeah. in yeah. <laughs> ruined the crops. <laughs> and uh, it also raised the coliform levels in the lake uh, severely. My bad, I didn't realize until uh, the middle of December that we have no plan within the Friends of Lake Warner to test coliform in the lake this coming year. So the first thing I've done, the first proposal here, is a simple test program where we sample the water basically at the boat landing and test it. And if it's nasty, we post it. And it's a matter of public safety. Uh, it's not a continuation of previous programs that we've done, which have been scientific monitoring, trying to characterize, scientifically characterize the work. This is simply a matter of public safety. Uh, I hope that at some point during the year we will have regular funding for this over the coming years. And I'm hoping that I'll be able to turn around and say, okay, we're going to turn back at the money to you. I don't know if that's going to happen. That's not a promise. <laughs> but that's, I, we need to permanently fund, Friends of Lake Warner needs to permanently fund this somehow because it is a matter of public safety. If Ed should get it into his head someday that he wants to go jump off a lake and skinny dip someday, uh, that lake can be pretty damn polluted. My daughter used to, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and and it's, it worries me. Uh, we also have other issues with the lake that involve safety, and this is just part of it. Uh, because of warming and whatnot, we're getting increased levels of cyanobacteria. Uh, we've had a couple of blooms. That basically means we have to shut the lake down, or at least put a red sign up and say, don't go anymore. <coughs> so. It still can be used for fishing? 
Oh, well, don't eat it. Eat it. <laughs> I would you can eat fish. It. You can fish I would all eat you anything want. you caught in North Adley Pond. <laughs> no, you can fish all you want. Uh, you can't eat it just by statewide prohibition. Uh, we've known that for years and years and years. Have you actually seen people swim in there? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I've, been, I've been here for 33 years and I've swum in the lake. So, <laughs> I don't swim in the lake now. Right. There's always, uh, <laughs> yeah, and there's always non-intentional swimming yeah. from boaters. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you going to monitor the colophon? Pardon? Where are, are you going to monitor the colophon? Right there at the boat landing. That's where most of the activity is. That's where people go in. That's where you come up and you pull up your trailer and you take your boat so out. So you're not going to go all the way upstream like you no. were previously doing? No, we're just going to walk into the lake and, and you know, walk in about this deep and go like this with a, a, a container and take it up to Greenfield and have it tested, get the results the next day, call up uh, one of our members and say go down and put a green or a yellow or a red sign up on the poultry board. Well, the monitoring in the past, I mean, you were enough to share some of the information with me about the coliform yeah. and uh, you said it was alarming and you know then I went online and Five Mile Pond and, and Springfield had the same level, UMass Pond had the same level so it was not just unique to our lake water in no. certain areas so uh, one of our tests are you being overly alarming or is there some no I'm actually following the law I'm literally, uh, I, the EPA has standards of, you know. But Five Mile Pond, for example, is, you know, people, mm -hmm. they swim in it still. Right, but they have to test it and they have to post it, whether or not it meets those standards. If it's a, yeah. you, Five Mile is a public beach, right? I think so. It is, yeah. yes. So if it's a public beach, they're, the City of Springfield's Board of Health has to test it and post well, it if it's going to be open. The, well, if it's going to be open illegally, if it's going to be open to the yeah. public, it has to be tested. Any place where a community allows people to swim. So, so assuming the responsibility of, of Lake Water, uh, We're the you don't have any provisions to fund this kind of... A, Not you're current. assuming some of the liabilities as well as some Absolutely. of the benefits. So yeah. you're... It's like an insurance policy that, yes. as I say, it slipped. It slipped by. We didn't realize it. We've been tootling along for three years with coliform tests and everything else. And I got to looking at something, and I said, "My God, we don't have any program for next year." So that's it. Any any prognostication on why this isn't a town of Hadley budget item? Nope. Why is this? Why are we going to CPA no to fund this? And if it's such an important section of the town, probably because it's been forgotten and nobody. I mean, what? It would be up to the board of health to do the sampling. Um, if mm -hmm. the town was going to take it over, the. I mean, technically, is the. And excuse me, but is the. Boat ramp owned by the town? Is it? I think so. Is, is the boat ramp a the legal boat ramp access? boat ramp is owned by the town. And because it is, how big is the water? Is it more than 10 acres? Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah. it's considered, it would be considered a great pond? No. No? It is a great pond. It, why? It's not a pond. It's, it's dammed. But it's still. It is. So it's they considered, still considered great, erroneously, great pond, great right. pond. erroneously labeled as a great pond. It is, yeah. it is a no pond, but it right. is under mass, mass whatever regulations is so labeled certain, as a great it's pond. It's considered a great pond. So it has certain things that are required for it. So, I mean, I think it just comes down to that no one in the town ever thought of, you know, oh, this is something that, yeah, people use it, but I don't think anyone really thought, oh, we should be testing it. Yeah. How many years will this cover? One. One. And, and hopefully not even that. Hopefully we'll find a better don't. way to do this. If you don't, you're going to come back to us? No. 
No, I mean, this is, this is a one-shot deal as far as I'm concerned. I'm not going to embarrass myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm embarrassed enough. <laughs> okay. I'm going to come back and ask again, but this is a stopgap measure that I, I personally feel must be done as a steward of the lake. We owe it to the public. And I would imagine that you folks doing it would be less expensive than if the town had to do it. Oh, yeah. In well, terms of labor, and I mean, I'm sure the, the cost right. to get the water sample is probably the same no matter who right. gets it done. But these the friends are going to donate their time and effort to it, so it's definitely going to cost less money than if the town were going to do it. Well, I mean, if the if the town was going to do it, they would just add it onto someone's route because they sample for coliform all over the community. So they would just add that as an extra stop. But as this is the cost of, of getting the test results for that one as well. The what is num which is nominal which at best? It's it's, like it's, it's, I mean the right town here. usually has a contract with whoever they're doing they're doing the test with. So X number of tests you have a blanket cost. So it easy. may actually be cheaper the friends might want to talk to the select board. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. And see what the town and can do. DPW too. Yeah, whoever. Yeah. Whoever is well, the select board. Talk to the DPW. Yeah. Um, now this is uh, the t cost of the testing for us is twenty four dollars. We have the Connecticut River Conservancy does it. Uh, last year with the other environmental testing that we were doing, we were charging twenty five dollars to drive it up and back. This is six. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> we have to do the same thing. Anytime we're using a, a, a above ground irrigation, mm -hmm. we have to test the water source. Right. And but not drip irrigation. Well, drip is if you use a, if you use water from the the pond or the brook, you have to use you have to get it tested. We use municipal water for our drip irrigation, so the town tests for that and we just submit that test and it's adequate. Do you allowed to use town water for irrigating? They use it on lawns, what's the difference? <laughs> you pay for it. I'm paying for it. The gal goes through a meter. <laughs> One of these days we've talked in the past about uh, you know, comparisons and I've gone to where your water is pulled out and where yours mm -hmm. is pulled out and where Wally's comes and all the rest of it, and that's done by a commercial, testing is done by a commercial outfit over in Wheatley. Hatfield. Hatfield, I'm sorry. And uh, I don't know why, but it's a totally different methodology. And because they no are the people factor. that are authorized yeah. to test for food safety. Yeah. Other labs are not authorized by the uh, food safety people to conduct the test. That's why we have to go. We kind of have to go to yeah. Hatfield. I know. How long have you been doing it? Six years? Yeah, five, six. I, I honestly don't know. Because I, I, we always get in a big fight and we storm in different directions when we have to do it. Do you think it's possible to get that data? I can ask my wife if she has it. I don't mean just from you. I mean across the board because every farm on, on North Amherst on down the Mill River is testing, mm -hmm. and that's a, a wonderful source of data that we're not exploiting. I'm assuming <coughs> you could. I don't see why you couldn't if you called up the lab. Well, we yeah. will have you guys get together after the Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Lab probably won't release the information because the client paid for it. Right. 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 We just so need the data, not, not, not the names. Right. <laughs> I don't know. I, I know that it would take my wife a considerable amount of time to find the data and we're an entirely small operation and if you take a larger operation they ain't gonna look for it. Mm -hmm. um, any other questions okay. or comments on this one? Um, I would think that since it's such a small amount of money we would weigh one percent match. Yeah. Which is our tradition. I have no issue with that. Okay, the next thing is the what we're now calling the archipelago. It used to be the Texas Peninsula, uh, except if you go down there, it's not a peninsula. It's 
a bunch of little islands. <laughs> and there's not much of it. Uh, we've got, uh, we inherited that from Kestrel. It's now Friends of Lake Warner property. I've been going there for 33 years. About every two weeks I go and pick up the trash. So uh, it's near and dear to my heart. Uh, I went down there yesterday, I thought, with three nights of hard freezing. I might be able to walk in. The dog felt really bad. <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't get very far. I have three photographs that I took. Uh, if you want to pass them around. Um, basically, there is a small trail that's been there since Native Americans, you know, thousands of years. Uh, at one point, it belonged to the Scots, and it was a logging or cattle trail or something. It was a bridge that crossed the river actually over to where Mass Wildlife is. And uh, it's been wearing for years, and it's a lot of wear and tear on it. And there are probably, I'd say, two or three people, judging from my tracking skills, that go there every day during the summer. And uh, a couple of years ago, I went out there, and people have always been putting logs and whatnot so they can cross the wet spots and what have you. I found some pallets. Um, the pallets contain contaminants. I got rid of them, and we fiddled around with some other things. I pulled everything out. It's totally stripped now. You can't walk there without much of gut pit boots on. Um, and what I'd like to do is put in an absolutely minimal impact plank walk that is nothing more than a treated plank, 12 inches wide, sitting on a couple of bolsters on a couple of footers, nothing dug into the ground, no spikes, no posts, no anything, simply enough to keep the people from walking through the muck. This first photograph here which shows a couple of logs which People have moved around, okay, and they've been displaced in this case by flooding. Uh, is actually a migration route. Uh, I suspect, I do not know this, for wood turtle. But I have observed other turtle, including snapping turtle, etc., and other animals there. running right up and down that wood path. So, what I'm talking about putting in there has to be high enough for them to get under. <laughs> Etc. There are a couple of other places. There's a little spot way up where my dog is falling in, <coughs> okay, which, is, which is a deep channel. Um, and uh, that is actually um, muskrat and beaver are mm -hmm. moving through there to the semi vernal pools, which are, are back in that area. So the path basically runs right across migratory routes, is what it boils down to. And so I want to protect those, and I want to protect the path, and I want to make it a little bit safer actually to move back and forth in there instead of breaking your anchor. And you may want to file a request for determination of the I have it right here. It's not complete, but I'm working on it. <laughs> that lady right there. She handed it to me. <laughs> I wish I didn't have to do it. It's a horror. <laughs> but, uh, it, uh, yeah, I've, I've got it right here. I'll be seeing you <laughs> to complete that. Um, and this is, um, that's it. If logs float away that people are placing there, time to the walk out. And you put your walkway there, won't those things float Tie them together. Well, this, it's going to be a little Tie them together, you get a string of 20, 30 feet long, it's not going anywhere. It'll this. hang up. And I've gone down there many a time, and, you know, <coughs> put it back in place. <laughs> I'm told that I can't tie it to the trees. So, <laughs> okay, I'm not going to put a stake in the ground, and I'm not going to dig, or any of the rest of that. I don't want to get into that, that kind of environmental impact. Uh, what have you. Um, but, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm an ex-Green Beret engineer. It's easy to make this work. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, this is all going to be subject to Conservation Commission approval, I would exactly. assume. Yeah. And it's going to be a little bit more complicated, so $786 won't cover it because if the same rules are going to apply to your bridge as the snowmobilers have to go through, 
it's it's going to be a little bit more complicated, I think, than well, seven hundred dollars. One of the things you're looking at, the gentleman's looking here in the picture, is the footers are out of my wood pile out back. So no, the only thing I'm actually buying is the planks. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, I mean, and it's going to be labor, and guess whose labor it is? You know, huh? yeah, and guess yeah. whose tools? You know, huh? and guess whose screws? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Guess who's going to drive it down there? <laughs> well, certainly, used to walk that with no problem at all. In 1948, they raised the height of the dam up exactly. higher, and that became naturally flooded. But, yeah. So it's something that has not been going on for centuries. It's it's a, a few well, years old. Uh, and so people just didn't go to the old bridge and fish anymore because it was, well, you could get to it, but it was just a little bit more difficult. You're trying to make it a convenient thing. You could walk around that area and, uh, no, and get not, to I, that same place. I, I really, it, we, this is controversy with the friends of Lake Warner, as a matter of fact. I don't want any more people down there, okay? Yeah. <clears throat> but what I want to lessen is the impact of the people that are going. That's what I'm trying to do. That's what I'm concerned about. Right. If you provide a route, it's less people making a path over here, making a path over there. <coughs> so it's actually less impact on the wetlands. But if you, you make it easier for people to cross, more people will come. Absolutely. That's Good. always the dilemma. Anytime you build a highway, you get more traffic. <laughs> but race to the point where that access point there isn't well publicized. Um, what's what's unique about it that does the piece of land is unique. Mm -hmm. The piece of land juts out into Lake Warner. Well, that's because they have to put a bridge there. They put the well. This that was all. I don't know how many years ago. When did the bridge go down? I, I wasn't here. Uh, yes. <laughs> so, yes. Years ago. But I mean, my God, Native but Americans lived here for seven thousand years. Do you think there wasn't a trail on both sides of the river? <laughs> okay, <laughs> so uh, there are logging trails all up and down over Mount Warner. There's not a, a native piece of vegetation on that peninsula archipelago because it was totally logged over in the 19th century. Um, but you go into there, I don't know, I bear, moose, deer, wildcat. I actually saw link tracks about 30 years ago. I haven't seen them since. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know the deer come Fox. up and eat my, eat my crops. Yeah. <laughs> okay. and the uh, the I'm happy to eat them for you. Fox, swans, which are invasive, but I, I love them, uh, geese, ducks, you name it. And because of the way the, the land juts out there, it basically bisects the lake and almost the river, and it serves as a north-south corridor, and it serves as an east-west corridor. So if you want to go somewhere on Lake Warner or Mount Warner area, and you want to see all the birds that come through, and you want to see all the animals that come through, just go down there at about 3 a.m. and sit there and be quiet. That's 3 a.m. <laughs> and you don't see them. <laughs> okay. It's a, it's, it's, it's a paradise in a sense. It's not pristine. It's not pristine nature or anything like that. But it's a little animal paradise, and we have talks in the Friends of Lake Warner. It's how do we keep people out of this market? You know, do we put up poison ivy signs? <laughs> okay. On the same token, what's happening is I was down there yesterday. Somebody went down with a 4x4 truck, and there's a new set of lights. No. Yeah. So, it's okay. So wet. And uh, there's people are going to go there. Let's preserve what we can. Let's protect what we can. That's what this is about. Can you put a gate across a <laughs> star bridge? If we do, I have had people tell me that they will destroy the gate. That they will chainsaw or cut or tear out the gate with their 4 by 4 Right now, the snowmobile club goes through there. Right. It's against the codicil. They can't it's specific, go through there. It is specifically against the codicil with the property. The snowmobiles can't go on that road. Where would they go? When it's there ain't no road when it's frozen. They, they just go around. And it's <laughs> kind of a dead end. Yeah. You go around the circle, there's no place to go. No, they go down when and the then they go down. When the lake is frozen, they'll go all the way out on the lake. All the way down the river. Yeah. The when the lake is frozen, and they'll go all the way down there. Yeah. 
they cut across, they'll go, because you see the, the tracks go by the pumping station? Yeah, that's, that's their right trail, there. that's right. right. So it's and then not, they cut it's straight, not, it's not, okay. right, but they cut straight across and... And they will tell you that it's all, it's a county road. You know, there is no such thing as a county road, and I don't think there ever was. And I can't find it on a map, and I've looked at maps from 1834 on. Yeah, Stockbridge Road and Knightley yeah. Road were county roads. When you appear before the, 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 uh, the one going down the property, you better be aware when you appear before the. Yeah. <laughs> there are a few snowballs. Anyway, that's, that's, that's all I've got to say. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much. And I wanted to say, since I recognize a bunch of these neighbors of mine, I really thank you, thank you for doing this. <laughs> Can I question your uh, please uh, building technique here? Yeah, <laughs> please. It's a mock-up. Well, oh, I understand that. <laughs> if this is a two by four, mm -hmm. for whatever you call this, two by four by twenty-four. That's your what you're calling your footer. Yeah. And then, how long is it going to be before that rots and everything? Uh, if if I use treated, which I prefer not to. Uh, mm -hmm. It will last forever. If I use what I have, which is right there, that is a hardwood off of, I believe, oak pallets okay. that I've salvaged off, and I figure six years. And this obviously has to be maintained. Uh, and I've actually, you know, you can question my budget and whatnot. And I've basically budgeted it for six years. Okay. And to, to Joe, your point, whether he needs more money or not, he's willing to tell us that he needs X amount of 2 by 12s and he's going to provide the rest. So that's all he gets. Mm -hmm. If he gets it, that's all he gets. Yeah. Yeah. He, if he wants to put in all the time and effort, and yeah. then amen to him. Yeah. This is my fun. <laughs> <laughs> what I do for fun. <laughs> how, how many separate sections are you talking about and what's the total? I have to read it. <laughs> uh, 750 feet long. It's 231 2 by 12 by 8. Yeah. 31 2 by 12 by 8. Yep. There's a whole bill of material right there. Yeah. Okay. See, so it's pretty small. Yeah, it's I'd like small it to be smaller. Yeah. You know, if I don't have to use it all, uh, absolutely. Um, but also a good possible pilot project for other. Oh, there's other lots of us. That We've got an 18 page planning use. document for that area. <laughs> We inherited it. We inherited it with a really lovely package, environmental package from Castro. Mm -hmm. And um, but uh, yeah, again, as I say, it's controversy within the group, within the Friends of Lake Warner. Do we get more people down there, or do we just? Keep it's like a dog chasing its tail. It's a never-ending battle. Except yeah. if, the, if the people who are already using it are threatening the area, then you have to do yeah. something. I mean, I have a ridiculous dream. I want the bridge back. <laughs> <laughs> I want to put in a suspension bridge or something that so that you could go from this over to the mass. I like, don't. They would go You would be able to walk across that <laughs> pond in a few years. Yeah, you know, walk across in the winter. Yeah. I, I no, I'm talking in the summer. In July too. I don't believe a suspension bridge is. <laughs> no, you can't. It's just EPA money. Right. <laughs> fishing no, I don't think I won't come here for this. Thank you. No, I just, I, you know, I just look at it and say, "That's be so cool." <laughs> you know, when the, yeah, when we'll the, when we have drought and the level drops on the pond a lot, you can see the, the footings of where the bridge was still. Right. Yeah, but it's seven and a half feet there. Yeah. And so uh, that that thing. So. Good yeah. work. <laughs> Any thank other you. questions about this one? No, thank you. Thank you for waiting. Are you guys still here because you have another request? Yes, we have a whole You just maps. don't have anything else to do? No, I just That's figured I'd, I'd wait because that one involved <laughs> conservation. <laughs> All right. Well, last but not least, um, I have my own project, uh, which I only made one copy, but I did send it out on the email. Did I? I have it. I have it. <laughs> Except my, my printer kind of ate it. Uh, I did bring a copy, but I have so much paper that I don't it's even know where to get it. Oh, here it is. Okay. Um, have you seen it? Yes, I did. Thanks. There are two old maps of Hadley from the 1740s, uh, which are supposed to be on deer skin, uh, which are kept in the building inspector's office in a file drawer. Which he told me was was found decades ago, 
in the bottom of a safe and nobody knew about them. Um, and they're just a treasure. They're the oldest maps of Hadley known to exist. 1740s, that's pretty old. Have you seen them? Yeah, I have seen them. Um, Are they legible? The, oh, they're, yes. they look like they're in great condition. Of course, some person on their own initiative put them into heat sealed plastic envelopes. Um, but I have to say, they don't look any worse for wear. Um, anyway, uh, I want $500 to get a preservation plan for the two maps from the uh, Williamstown Art Conservation Center. And um, they'll take a look at them, and they'll assess their condition, and uh, give us a plan for their preservation and how to either store them or display them, depending on what they think is best in terms of their long-term preservation. Um, so this is money for the plan, and then I'll come back later to get money to, to implement it. Um, nobody knows who owns the maps or who's responsible for them. Uh, Do you draw? <laughs> so, um, so, yeah. Yeah. so I guess I'd ask the select board for permission to bring them to the, uh, mm -hmm. and I would go myself unless somebody else wants to take them. Um, and what else can I say? I mean, they're really pretty great. They're only of parts of the town, you know, it's not the whole, the whole thing, but uh, I thought they'd be great to put on display in the new, uh, in the new library in the special collection section. So, you know, so if they were like in a wall, you could see both sides of them or something like that. But that, but who knows if that's going to happen first. The, first we got to see if the plastic is removable. If, well, whether it's bad, and if it is, if it's removable. What they said on the phone was, if it's just treated around the edges, you can just pop it right out. But if it's glued in, we're in big trouble. Why'd you pick uh, that particular outfit? They were recommended to me by several other museums, Smith College and UMass. And there's, there's also a place, that there's a couple of conservation places, and this is the, the closest one. Some people say it's the best. Now, they will come do an inspection in Hadley, but for twice as much. Yes. Yes. I was just wondering um, if you had checked in with the UMass archive people. It sounds like you have, yeah. and that they recommended yeah, one of these places. Yeah. You know, it's like deer skin. We don't know anything about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. reaction did you get from the Smith people? Uh, well, I asked them if they could help us. They said that they don't do that kind of thing. Um, but they recommended this this place. Have you gotten permission from the select board to take on this project? Or are you going to no. ask for the money and then ask them? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's unclear as to whether, you know, who's responsible for well, it. We have to assume it's in a town building the town. Yeah. 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 So. so maps are either assessors or DPW. Right. I, I was told it was found in the safe in our room. Oh, yeah. so it's ours. It's ours. <laughs> <laughs> right, and it has some stickers on it, you know, that say what it is, and, but nobody knows who put them there. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a good idea. I'm glad you're taking the initiative to, to do it. And at least what we're doing now, the organization may say, yeah, you can preserve them, but it's going to be forty-eight million dollars to preserve them. We, we don't know that. Then we'll put them back in the drawer. Right. <laughs> then, then we'll put them back. So well, we should we should find out more about them and find out what it's going to cost. Well, to, that's exactly. The that's what he's. Us right. Well, I think it would be behoove you to go talk to yeah. Mr. Nixon at least. Oh, well, I've already spoken to him. Okay. Yeah, and Tim Neidhart, and we had a meeting, and we were, we're the ones that came up with the with the six goals. And, Okay. They're, they're all for it. No, I feel better knowing that. I, okay. I, I, should, I should have said that. Do you have a I've been collecting maps all my life. I've never wasted to do this. I mean, even if you can't remove the plastic, you can seal the whole thing in, a, in an acrylic. Uh, huh. So, and it's not hideously expensive. And uh, the ideal thing to do is to remove the plastic, seal them in, ni in nitrogen, blah, blah, blah. But uh, and, you know, back them up with non-acidic paper and blah blah blah. But this is this is everyday, everyday archaeo you know preservation. Libraries go through this. 
And I'm hoping if this, if this goes through, there might be other historic relics in town that we can, you know, help preserve for the future. Where, where would these get shown or displayed, though? That would be safe. He's saying in the library. I'd like to have them in, in the new library, but okay. no, ex excellent question. There, there is a little controversy within town. Where do you store these things? Yeah. Have the historical commission, the library doesn't oh. want them, so that oh. that's a very good question. Yeah, yeah well, I've talked to the, and the everybody says the library. The library doesn't want some of the stuff, and then they right. go to the historical. People have asked me, you know, is there room in your tobacco shop for oh. storing some of this stuff. Oh. So it, there is I'll, a bit of a controversy. They can hang it in my office, Andy. I talked to Patrick and the library committee and they're interested in it. No, I think it's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that is, you, it just doesn't come around and that mm -hmm. is, I've never seen or heard of any maps being drawn on deer skin. Right. So I think that's very interesting and it should be preserved. Well, I would I would suggest that you go to town hall and take a look at them because they're pretty cool. Well, we don't want too many people yeah. to be looking at them. Oh, because oh you I'll want, erase that point. Well, <laughs> only, only because the more you take them out and expose them, yeah. the more you more have you a chance of damage. Right. 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 They did take them out for the 350th celebration, oh. but somehow I missed it. Oh. I guess hmm. we all did. Yes. So um, you're requesting five hundred dollars. So you're going to be the contact person for this specific project. Yep. Okay. Yep. You know, unless given the cost, we can waive the twenty percent. Mm. Exactly. So that's very generous of you. Yeah. I, I so he doesn't. That. He doesn't need a vote to do that. Yeah. My uh, well, my contribution will be. I won't charge the gas. The next. So yeah. we'll have to vote on this before the historical commission sees. Right, we have to find We're out. We're the last Tuesday of the month. Right. When's our next meeting? Two weeks from now, right? Okay, well, if you guys vote no, I won't do it. Oh, no, 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 oh, yes. <laughs> okay. I already let them know. <laughs> okay. Well, we can always put contingent upon. Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay, well, I think that's historic. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Any okay. other questions about this one? Thank you. How big are they? Uh, they're 47 by, I wrote, 46 inches by 37 inches. So about half the size of this table. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, they are nice. You can read the names of the people. And the, well, you know, what kind of ink do you suppose they used on deer skin? You know, is it deer skin? You know, a lot of people say, you know, what everybody says it is, and then when you... Maybe it's look at cat. it. It's not what everybody says it was. Maybe it's a cow. So who knows? <laughs> yeah, yeah. A Holstein cow. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you everybody for your support. Okay. So oh, we need. Yeah. Oh. Um, we we, 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 we not going to vote on it. We're no, no, no. But before we go, um, I have two other things to report on, or three. Um, I think we might need a third meeting to do some community business. Um, to finally vote on the plan, you know, on the CPA plan, and just to talk about how we want things to go in the future. Um, so think about that. Mm -hmm. um, everybody except for me on this committee is on two town committees, and you're so dedicated that I don't want to make this a regular thing. But I think it would just be good, you know. I think it's a wise idea. Um, so think about that. Think about that for next week. Um, I also had a meeting with Jennifer and somebody else at Town Hall about hiring a minute secretary. Um, and they think it's really possible to get a part-time employee of the town and just add hours on top of that. Would they transcribe a recording? They would transcribe them, they'd re record them, they'd help with the filing. You know, it would be... <laughs> the filing is in desperate hours, need of... 25 hours a year. Being done. And we could use the... Um, this, this is always a, a concern amongst many committees. The planning board, uh, we used to take not copious notes, as we're doing here, we just take basic headlines, uh, what was presented. And that seems to be adequate. And if people wanted the question in more detail, we were we are always on television. So that can substitute. 
I'm sorry, can you hold But from the sorry. finance committee, if every little committee now wants a, another secretary, that's going to be because obviously the planning board's going to ask for one, the zoning board of appeals is going to ask for one, and so. Uh, how many? I mean, we don't do it. We don't have these minutes for the finance committee. Exactly we, right. We only list what the vote is. Well, yeah, we, the building committee. We used it to is take, nice to take have a, these minutes, a, but it uh, doesn't happen. Right. And report it, and then somebody would then, you know, boil down the the highlights, so to speak, yeah. from so, from well, the recording, or, or take notes during the meeting. So, so, meeting and so long as every meeting is taped, that's fine. But if it's not, then. Uh, well, you know, well, do you have to get the word by word? I haven't made a decision, obviously. I, I don't have word by word. I'm just giving you uh, an, an update because we've talked about this in the past. Right. And hopefully we can discuss this at our, at our third meeting. Right. Um, Could I have a, a recap of uh, we're looking at um, the Shala APR is 210000 oh, oh, this is good. Thank you. Correct? Yeah. Um, let me see if I lost let me make sure I got no. Yes, yeah. the, the school 185. 185. Fala. I meant one, two, three. Okay. And then school. The Fala's is Established, there was rumors that the CPA fund. Why we? Why do we need it? Mm -hmm. So there was a concern of it might end. So we wanted to have some money available, so that if it did end, there would be something there. And it doesn't mean that that can never be touched. Either. Right. right. It's, it's right. Is, is there is there a contingency on it right now that if we spend whatever we've got and we're into that hold back, can we, can we vote two to thirds, spend it? Two-thirds committee vote. Okay. Two-thirds right. committee vote can access that. that All right. Then I'm okay with that. that. I didn't want it to be untouchable. No. No. no it is touchable. Same, uh, actually, what the committee did, the committee didn't do what it wanted to do. We had, like, we had double that amount. So the committee said it. Any expenditures over six hundred thousand have to be by a two thirds vote, which is not any amounts that put us below the six hundred thousand. So that's one of the things I want to talk about. Okay. But so far we haven't had any projects over six hundred thousand. And hopefully we never will. That's <laughs> Yes, it is a lot. Soccer fields will be. Well, <laughs> well right. don't 30, we give 30 times the charm. 
phase two or phase three to go through. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, a lot of their phase three is not pre is not a, um, approved use for CPA funds. You know, like the hot dog stand and that kind of thing. <laughs> um, anything else before we go? No, so we're um, we're planning on coming back two weeks from tonight we to are. vote on these, Same which is time. the 28th, am I correct? Uh, 28, yeah. Okay. Is that the sole purpose of that meeting? Uh, I wouldn't say that it's the sole purpose. If you have other things you want to talk about, I'll put them on the agenda. You, um, will representatives of each group be back? I hope so. I told them. Okay. You know, I said, you don't want to miss the vote. <laughs> because it is up to the representatives of these proposals to sell their proposal at town meeting. Mm -hmm. It's not up to this committee. Right. We were told in no uncertain way, shape, or form that we are just an advisory committee. <coughs> well, I think we all agree with that. Yeah, but, but I, I also, if there's a proposal you want to support, I would encourage you to stand up and tell me. Well, yeah, you just have to say you're speaking as a private citizen, yeah. not as a member of the committee, mm -hmm. right. if, if it's appropriate. Right. So. In Amherst, the committee does it, presents it at town yeah, meeting. Every, every town's different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? It gives it a more weight, kind of, I think. Frankly, I think I say enough in town meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I don't want to have to do the whole CPU mm -hmm. spiel. <laughs> You do have your free card. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, I need a motion. Adjourn. So moved. Second. <laughs> the women are out of here. Yeah. It's unanimous. Get ready to